Hi, I'm Leon Poindexter, and here we are again at the Gloucester Marine Railways. As you can see behind me, we're finishing up the Eleanor, getting her ready for launch. Uh, but we've got the Beavers down in Boston, and last week we stepped the masts on her. Uh, so why don't we go take a look at that? Well, early in the morning, we moved the Beaver from the uh, museum wharf over to the uh, crane barge uh, to begin stepping the masts. Uh, the Scotia Girl, which is a Gloucester fishing vessel, uh, came down from Gloucester to help with this, and we also used a little skiff that belongs to the barge. Well, of course, the Beaver doesn't have an engine of her own, so we need these assist vessels uh, to move the Beaver over. So this is going to be quite a tricky operation, especially in the tight quarters here in uh, Fort Point Channel. First mast that we stepped is the uh, mainmast, and as we pick up the mainmast, uh, as you can see, the two stages of the mast are bound together. Once the mast is stepped and the rigging is set, then the second part of the mast is raised up from the deck. As the mast is lowered down through the deck, uh, we've dropped the coin into place, and we have men down below that are aligning the, uh, the mast with the step to make sure that the tenon fits into the mortise that's carved into the keelson. Well, one of the traditions of stepping mast is putting a coin under the mainmast. Uh, in this case, we chose a 1773 Haypenny uh, from Britain. It's an old uh, tradition that started back in the days of Rome. They would put a coin under the, the main mast as a, as a payment to Sharon, uh, who was the person who would take you across the River Styx. Of course, that was in case the boat sank. You wanted to be able to, to get back to uh, the underworld. Well, once the uh, main mast is set, again, we go through the same process again to pick up the foremast off of the crane barge, and as we swing it over, we lower it down through the deck, and again, we have to make sure that the tenon and the, uh, the mortise fit in the uh, keelson. And once we have a fit, uh, we set her down, and the crew can start uh, spreading the rig and tying it down. Uh, yeah, well, what's interesting about this rig is that you get to see a, a snapshot in time of, of how uh, ships were run before we got used to all kinds of new modern materials. This is a brig, and it was, uh, that means it's got two masts, and it's got uh, square sails on both masts. Um, it was a popular uh, ship because it had a lot of horsepower for deep ocean travel, like from getting from one continent to another. We were really trying to make everything look just the way it would uh, in the late 1700s, so it's, um, it's fun to have gathered a crew that know this work and, uh, and can, can uh, reproduce what, what would have been typical for the time period. Leon, of course, is a master at that. He's, he's one of the foremost authorities on, uh, on heavy timber marine construction, and he's really had his way with these uh, ships. Uh, he's made them so totally authentic, and I asked him to do that because when people come here to see these, I want to be able to point to anything on these ships and say that's the way it should have been done, and it was done that way. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode, but check with us next time, and uh, we'll be launching the Eleanor and getting her ready to take to Boston.